Hi again. <laughs> What's going on? How we doing? Doing, doing well. Is this your first Comic Con? No, last year. Oh, you were here. You're my sorry. second one. Yeah, yeah, but it's different this year. <laughs> so, one of the burning questions I've had for Ralph is: I mean, it's really about Sue. Where are we? I mean, like where we pick up. Have you, have you met her yet? Are you still chasing? What is the what is the mystery behind Sue Dibney? I can't tell you when we're gonna meet her, and I can't tell you when we're gonna see her. I can't tell you, but um, we are gonna see that. I mean, I, what I can tell you is in the first episode, we're going to already be exploring how that's affecting him and what he's doing with, you know, following that that file that he got last year, the Dearborn file, and seeing what's going on with that. So we're gonna we're gonna jump right into that. Um, but I can't tell you when we're going to meet her, but we are going to meet her. I'm very excited about that. And just realized I'm actually a little nervous about that, too. It's like a big thing for the character, for the Ralph character. All roads lead to Sue, you know, with Ralph, I think. his relationship to the rest of the team. Yeah. I think one of the things that, you know, that I took away from last season and that we explored was he's sort of like in a lot of ways the heart of the team a lot of times, you know. He was developing his relation we developed his relationship with Cisco, with Caitlin, with Killer Frost, with Sherlock, Sherlock. Um, and we kind of saw th this more than we ever did in season 4. We really saw this guy open up and you know, he finally felt like they were his family, and I think that brought out something in him. Where he's there for them, and he's there for them no matter what. I mean, he's a big puppy dog of a character in the best way. He's like a great Dane, and I love that about him. And he's just a sweet, sweet, sweet guy who, uh, who has a very big heart, and I love that we explored that last year. Um, and we're going to see, I think, some more independence from him, too, than we ever saw before in terms of, you know, with Vibe not having his powers, with, with Cisco not having his powers, you know, they're down a member in the field. So people need to step it up and need to be more independent. And, and he's had the experience now, you know. He's been a hero long enough and had the experience of being on Team Flash where he's ready to step that up and do that. Are we going to see more of him as a PI this season too? Yeah, we're going to see more of the detective aspect. I mean, we, we started to get into that last year and then obviously the end of, of last year where you know, he figured out the dagger thing and all of that. And then we're going to pick right up and we're going to kind of get into that and keep playing that out more and more and more. And that's going to tie in with the deer bomb thing with the file with Sue and everything like that and take us on this road where you know he's exploring this aspect of, of his skills that he's very very good at and I'm excited for that I love that yeah, I am too. Yeah. so I'm sure you're not allowed to say too much about crisis um, but um, let's just say in the case that you are in that uh, how does it get, how does it feel to get to be part of one of the maybe biggest comic book stories of all time I bring back the television you know I feel the way about that that I feel about uh, being this playing this character and being on this show, which is I just feel extremely lucky to be totally honest. And I know that sounds like a talking point, but that's the honest truth. Is I grew up with a trunk full of comic books and two older brothers and watching Batman the animated series and like you know I remember seeing Tim Burton's '89 Batman movie in the drive-through. You know when I was four years old. I grew up living this kind of stuff and enjoying this kind of stuff so to be a part of it and then to think that I'm going to be a part of something like Crisis I mean, man, the 10 year old in me is just like doing backflips all the time you know it's very very cool I love my job and I'm very lucky to be able to do it uh, and I'm excited to see what happens with the crossover what do you want to see in Crisis can you I don't even know how to touch okay. that one <laughs> I don't even know how to touch that one it might be more about what do I not want to see okay. in Crisis okay um, because there's a cost that comes okay. with that. What I can tell you is that it's going to change things forever in terms of how this whole world works, and in ways that you that you might expect, and in ways that you also might not expect. But having said that, there's a lot like I know very little about it. Okay. I know very very little about it. I mean, I'm I'm a bit of a mushroom. They keep me in the dark and feed me. Okay. You know what? You know, and then I find out when it's time to go to work. Right. But uh, <laughs> I haven't learned that much about okay. it yet. Thank you. Ralph Dibney is such a beloved character for so many of us. From Well, what, what he is now, what he is, what he was, you know, 
midway through season five and at the end of season five and now at the beginning of season six. That's how I always saw him. And that's how, you know, when I did the audition process, I played him in that way too. Um, and then they wanted to see, you know, the, the other more Tex Avery walking cartoon character kind of side of things, which I have a lot of fun doing. I have a lot of fun doing that kind of, you know, crap fall slapsticky kind of stuff. But the way he is now is the way that I always saw him kind of a bit more fully formed and he's going to evolve even more but our goal when I started was cool yeah we see that too but let's start him here so we can bring him to that because if we bring him in and he's fully formed we're not going to have that much to mind in terms of having this character grow and I think Ralph is you know a lot more complex than than maybe people realize I think fans realize that but I think there's so much to dig in with that guy and, and there's such a rich history and so much progression to do including the detective thing including the Sue thing including you know all the elements that we brought in in season four. I'm glad that we did it that way. I really am. I, when I think back of how I was playing him in, in episode five or six of season four, and then I think of how I was playing him in 601 or 602 and, and who he is now, he still feels like the same Ralph. But, you know, he's like the guy you went to college with that you see like a few years after college, and you're like, man, you're still Ralph, but like, whoa, you know? I love that. So if Ralph's a great dad, who would you cast as dogs for the rest Guys, of the Guys, that has to be the last question. Sorry. I don't know who I, I don't know how to touch that one. I don't. I have no idea. Uh, Barry's a greyhound, right? They're the fastest, I guess. So it's got to be that. That's all I know about that. But he's got that like Scooby Doo aspect to him. <laughs> Ralph's got that like Scooby Doo Great Dane kind of a thing going on. Yeah, like that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I love dogs. You probably know that about me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe it's whippets. Maybe whippets are the fastest. Oh. <laughs>